guy. I like uh, Sid Vicious a lot. You know, I got along good with him, but I couldn't really bring him with us or travel with him. So it was kind of stuck in the why does, thing. Uh, why does Sid get such a bad reputation? I'll just ask that now because in our deal, like, of course, I've dealt with him a lot and he's always been a pleasure to deal with, but you always hear such horrible things about Sid from people. I don't know, me, I, I consider him to be uh, my best friend ever in the business. Like, uh, we had so much fun together. Like, uh, recently, uh, one of the girls, one of the girls that we met during some different tours in Germany, she, she had been in, back in touch with me. She's a, a flight attendant now for a, a big company. She's coming in Montreal and, uh, at the end of the month and I'm gonna have a, a dinner with her and uh, uh, whatever, you know, in the evening, just going to eat and just yeah. tell stories, you know. And she, she, she taught me and said we were really nice and gentlemen and Really never, you know, did anything wrong to anyone and even being drunk or whatever, we were just having fun. I mean, I really never saw Sid losing it, you know, being drunk, except if something, somebody was really looking for it. Like, yeah. the, let's say we were walking in, uh, in Memphis for, uh, I think Cheryl, Cheryl Crow was the singer there and, uh, it was like someone just keeping bugging his wife all the time and, just, and I saw him snap there but the guy was just after his wife non-stop and hey Sid this, Sid, Sid, oh, your wife's looking good and uh, oh, I, I like your wife and uh, <laughs> no, I, he snapped there, you know, he was snappy at some points but for a reason, you know, yeah. but for, with me, he never, we never had an argument, me and Sid. What happened with that Arne Anderson thing? Did he ever tell you the, the behind the scenes? Yeah, thing? he told me his versions. Uh, was he just being harassed into it, or was it, it was just that all to alcohol? me? He said that Arne started the whole thing. Starting with Arne was the first one to try to to stab him with the little scissors uh, because it started at the bar, right? Where you know they were saying that uh, Flair is too old, you know, he should get out of the business. Because Sid was a horseman then, right, or something? He was no, he was just Sid Vicious, okay. I guess. And uh, it was in uh, England. Okay. In Europe, anyways. And uh, it's bashing Flair, basically. And uh, Arn got involved, saying, hey, you should respect the guy, and blah, blah, blah. I told well, maybe uh, uh, Arn to fuck off, you know, and go back to your room or something like that. And on his way back to his room, uh, uh, Arne's uh, doors was open and uh, started to uh, get at it like verbally with Sid and reached out for like uh, little scissors. And, and I think uh, just Sid uh, grabbed it, grabbed it uh, off his hands and, and, and stabbed him like 13, 14 times. Yeah. But, uh, Messy situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I didn't go to jail and, yeah. uh, and, uh, and eventually, like maybe five, six, seven, eight, a few years after they worked it out, like they, yeah. they, they came to talk to each other again. And so, what was the incident with Pillman? The, sque the infamous squeegee incident, did he ever tell you about that? No, with, with, with Sid and Pillman? Yeah. Never I mean, asked I, him I, I, didn't, I didn't know. That's I, I, a very things that I didn't hear. Like, if, say, I didn't hear, like, the, the, the thing with Arn, I've heard about it. Yeah. So I yeah. asked him. Yeah. Because I was so close to him that I could ask him probably anything. Like, he was close to, he, he knew, like, my sister, uh, had uh, leukemia, and, and, and uh, he was very close to my family, to my mom and dad, you know, he was almost part of the family, and I was like, when I went to work for uh, Power Pro Wrestling, which was like yeah, the Memphis. NXT back then of, yeah. of uh, the WWF, in Memphis, I just stayed at his house. First I got, I rented a, a condo, and then eventually he said, just come to my house, and just, just live with the family, so, so I was there, uh, his wife was nice, generous, you know, like, uh, had a maid there, uh, helping out with the kids and everything, and we were going to the gyms every morning, and 
working out twice a day. And then Power Pro, we had like maybe three, four shows a week. You know, it was not a full schedule. You know, so it's pretty some time off there. So took care of me there and uh, had this phone call right, right when I was there at his house. Uh, Eric Bischoff called him for uh, offered him uh, the big deal for WCW. Oh, when he came back at the end there. Yeah, the one, uh, one point two. Then he said yes. Then uh, he said that that's the first year. It was one point two four years. Then he was happy with that. But then he said Bishop said after one point two, one point three, one point five, and it went up to many millions. <laughs> so he was really happy with that deal. And he said he ended up saving his money pretty well, didn't he, or something? I, yeah, Still, he didn't really never changed much. You know, he kept that same house. Uh, it was not a big, big spender. He, he likes, you know, he works on his. Uh, he has a special car that he. It's, it's not like a, it's a car. It's like a some sort of a jeep. You know, it puts a real strong engine in it. The tires and. It's, but his best friend is a mechanical, so it doesn't cost him that much. The parts, you know, it's like they're babies together. Those guys, you know, they just work on the Jeep all the time, and it can make the mud go up 50 feet in the air. You know, it's really, really strong. It's a nice Jeep. It's, it's very, very hot. But wow. other than that, it's not, it's not a big spender. 